Yes, grant that today. Holy Ghost fire burn in us. Amen, amen, amen. What a joy to be with you again. I greet my grandson Michael, pastor, and uh, we love very much, Bishop, recognize you and all this wonderful congregation. It's a privilege to be with you again. And uh, since time is of the essence, as you know, in this class, why don't we just go directly to the Word? And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 46. Psalm chapter 46, and we'll read verse 10 at that point. For the psalmist said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. You know, the world and the devil has a thousand ways to steal our faith. And I want to help you put a lock on yours today, if I can, by the help of the Lord. Just be still. And no. All right. Would you say, God bless your word? Thank you, and you may be seated. I'm told that there is an African, African tribe, a small tribe, that practices stopping at a certain point during the year. And they will stop and just squat down and sit there very still and quietly for a period of time. And once they were asked, why are you doing this? Why are you stopping and just meditating here? And the answer was, we're letting our souls catch up with us. And you know, that wouldn't be a, a bad idea for some of us to stop every once in a while and be still and let our souls catch up with us. If we can be still, if we can stop and turn off the world and some things that, that we, are, we are ingesting from the world, perhaps we can discover and know something vitally important about the eternal God and perhaps about our own eternity. So be still, but yet those words are not my focus today. My focus is on those next two words. And no, he said. First be still, and then and no. Know what? Know that I am, he said. Otherwise, all that you see around you today and all that is done here is just liturgy if we do not know the I am. He said, know that I am. You could stop right there. You could fill in that next word, God, but you could stop right there. Perhaps the greatest two-word statement in the Bible came from the pen of the eloquent writer of Hebrews who said, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. God is. That's a complete sentence right there. He's the only one who doesn't need an object to relate to the noun or the verb. God just is. And it is this isness of God that our faith needs to embrace on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got to evermore keep that before us that God is easily to forget in the day-to-day work-a-day lives that we have. It's easy to overlook, but God is. Keep those words before you because God exists outside of the realm of our five senses in a place where only faith reveals his reality in a place where we can of a surety say that God is. So when folks are prone to ask if God is, where is God? 
Who is God? God is what? I thought you'd never ask. God is what he is. Jesus is sufficient for who he is. And every place is where he is. He is omniscient. But the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. I imagine we all know a fool or two. But let me mention one today. You might remember the Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, who was the first uh, Russian in space. They sent him up in the spacecraft and he zoomed around the world and what have you. And, and uh, when he came back, they interviewed him and they asked him if he had seen God up there anywhere. And he said, I looked everywhere while I was up there in space. And he said, I didn't see a God anywhere. And I suppose that perhaps impressed some weak-minded folk, some non-thinkers, and some of the egghead professors and pinhead scientists. <laughs> but if we could have dissected Yuri Gagarin's brain, could we have found a mind in there? If we had dissected his heart, could we have found desire? Could we have found courage there or love or some other emotion? No, you would not, of course not. So his investigation of the heavens proved absolutely nothing because the most significant things of heaven and earth are invisible. They are beyond the reach of our physical senses. But we know they are there because we recognize their effects. For instance, gravity can't be seen and you can't really feel it in your hands and your fingers, but we know it exists. Just step on the scales and there's immediate proof. We know that Gravitational pull is real, the, the moon has that. It affects our tides, but it is invisible. God is somewhere beyond our sight, but not beyond our faith. We don't have to see him to know that he is. God just is. God is real, like air. You don't see it, but you can know that it's around because we breathe it about 20 times a minute. We are aware of the pull of the power of God upon us and we see his fingerprints on our lives. If God doesn't exist, tell me who is this living in my soul? If God doesn't exist, who delivered me from a world of sin? Who turned my life around? Who healed my body when I was sick? Who fixed my car when it wouldn't run? Who performed miracles in my life before my eyes? If God does not exist. Who provided for us when we were planning a whole missions church in North Carolina? When we didn't know where our next meal was coming from at times? Who supplied our needs, roughly for these last 60 years? When we didn't know where a lot of things were going to come from and how they were going to happen. Who put this hope in our hearts and who put this song on our lips and who put this joy in our hearts if Jesus does not exist? God is. He said, be still and know that I am. And yet, it is not some feeling that we have that convinces us that God is. At the bottom line, it is our faith. I can't say all that needs to be said about him today. After all the prophets have prophesied of him and all the teachers have taught about him, after all the apostles have held forth and all of the apologists have, 
have reasoned about him. After all, the singers have sung about him. We have to admit that the half has never yet been told. If we could study every book on every shelf in every library of the world that have been written about him, you would still have to say the half has never yet been told. After you taste of the goodness of God and drink of the powers of the world to come, then you still have to say the half has never been told. So he said, be still and know that I am God. And there is none else, he said. There is none beside me, none before me, none after me. He just, he just can't be put into words. He can't be confined to language. You can't confine him to a single definition. You just have to say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He is incomparable and beyond our words to describe. If Paul and Silas were here today, they would tell us that he is not just some one in the big temple over there at the top of the hill in Jerusalem, but he is also in the Philippian jail. Paul would say he's not just there as I clung to a piece of broken ship, but I was not alone when I was under that pile of rocks when they were stoning me at Lystra. He was there also. He can't be confined to one place. He just is. He's in your home, he's in your life, he's in your schools, he's in your church. He's with you in your cars, he's with you when you're praying, he's with you when you're studying, he's with you when you're hurting, he's with you when you're crying. He's that, he just is. That's what our faith has to tell us. If Daniel was here, he could tell us that you never have to stand by yourself. He's not just in the prayer room with the open window, but he is in the den of lions also. If David was here, he could tell us that God is when you're just a teenage boy facing a giant on the field of battle, but he also is when you're growing old. He said, I once was young, but now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or received begging bread. <laughs> He just, you know, he defies description. I would love to be able to, to describe God to you today, but it's beyond me. So I let these prophets and these men of old tell us. Isaiah could tell us that he is wonderful, the counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. If Mary and Martha were here, they would tell us that he is not just a God of the past, or the God of the future, but a God of the very present, the great I am, not the I was, not the I will be, but always in the present tense, always the I am. Hallelujah. Why don't we just praise him right now for that? What a revelation he gives us of himself, of his love, of his care. God, God just is. He has no, no point of origin. He has no source. He had no predecessor, and there will certainly be no successor. For there was no God before him, neither shall there be one after him. In fact, there is no after him. <laughs> he always will be. <laughs> The world can't understand him. Armies can't defeat him. Schools can't explain him. And leaders can't get ahead of him. Herod couldn't kill him and the Pharisees couldn't trick him and confuse him. The scribes couldn't, couldn't, couldn't take away who he was and, and just subtract from him. Pilate couldn't find fault with him and the grave 
couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. Rome couldn't silence him. The new age cannot replace him. And Oprah can't explain him away. Congress cannot impeach him. And he's not going to resign. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I know he has fallen out of favor in Washington these days, but they can take down all the monuments that are inscribed with the Ten Commandments. They can remove all the crosses and all the steeples and grind them to powder. After they knock down all the Christmas trees and all the manger scenes and all the Thanksgiving displays, after all the college professors have denounced him and removed his influence from their classrooms and their schools, after the media has dared anyone to mention his name, he still is. They can't run him out of heaven or off the earth or out of our souls. Jesus is not popular in Hollywood these days or in the glass-walled offices of the media moguls in New York. And if you're going to run for political office, I suppose, better not mention you're Christian. You can say you oppose destroying eagle eggs, and I'm sure you would be applauded, but oppose abortion and they would want to tar and feather you. It's a strange upside down world we live in today. It's not the world you knew when you were young. It's a different world today. It's different challenges today. But God was when you were young. God is when you're where you are today. He will be. Tomorrow, they can't run him out of the earth, out of heaven, or out of your life, out of your home, out of your faith. If they don't want him, we do. We want him in our homes. We want him in our hearts. We want him in our churches. I could say something right there. I could take some time right there, but I won't do it. But I, we need him in our churches. It's all about him today. It's not about us. It's about him today. It's about us lifting him up. It's about us magnifying him, revealing who he is, what he can do, and why he loves us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise today. They may wind up shuttering this church someday. They've done it in other countries, doing it even as I speak in some countries. They may, they may close every place of worship in this town, but they cannot and never will shutter God out of his own world that he created. He will be. He is. Never just was, but always will be. That is why he told Moses, don't worry about my proper name. Just tell them I am sent you. That's, 
That's all you need to know. And when you're sick and when you're hurting and when things don't go right, folks, just remember, he's still the I am. Moses, that's why I want you to take your shoes off and feel my holiness here because you're gonna need it down the road. You're gonna need to remember this moment. You're gonna need to remember this call, this commission. You're gonna need to remember that I said I am, not just I was. Jesus, in whom the fullness of God dwells, is the only one who can say, I came, but I was already here. He's the only one who can say, I'm going away, but I'm never going to leave you. And all that's just because he is. He is. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off of your hands. You can't outlive him and you can't live forever without him. If you're lost today, you can say, God is my savior. If you're sick today, you can say, he is my healer. If you're bound by sin and unbelief, you can say he is my deliverer. Can anybody testify to any of those? Is there a witness in the house? God still is. And if we would be still and know him, then you can know something about your future with him forever. So, If you're confused today, you can say, he's my counselor. So take your eyes off of your problems. I don't know what you came here with today. Most most people of any age carry some burdens, some trials. You've got kids, you've got grandkids. I guarantee you there's some hurts there. You've got situations in your life that you wish were different. You've got struggles. There's no fun about getting old. There's no positive things about getting old. Believe me. At 81, I'm there. And there's not very many positive, uh, a, a discount here and there. A senior, senior coffee at Max. <laughs> That's about the only positive that you can rake up, I suppose. But we need to, even now, quit saying my impossible situation is and say God is. My problem is that I can't overcome Stop saying that and replace it with God knows he is and it's going to be all right. Some way or other, some way or other, God's going to take you through the valley. That's what he says in Psalm 23, through the valley. God knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you're going through, what you're experiencing. He knows your hurts, your pain. And everybody in this house this morning, everyone I see here knows what pain is. You felt that. But before this day is past, I hope your faith will tell you again that he is. And that he is right there with you. That he understands you. He understands your family. He understands what you're going through. He understands your pain, your hurts. We got a message last night, just as you did, about someone who passed from this church. We got a message last night, a woman who passed from our acquaintance at home. A woman that I've known since I was 18 years old. She knew pain. The last few days, she has known extreme pain. It's been been very, very difficult for her. We visited her just before we came up here. Her pain was, was unbearable. Those things happen, but even if they do, we have to remember that God is 
rather than saying my pain is and my struggle is and my problem is, if we could just off of that for just a little bit and say God is. The I am is. Without faith it is impossible to please him. He that come up to God must believe that he is. How important that is today. So rather than let your mind dwell on your problems, on your situations, on your hurts, on your pains, on your disappointments, put them on Jesus, mighty to save. Put them on Jesus who is the I am. Put them on the one who can help you lift you, love you, put his arms around you today. I hope there's somebody in this house today that will let Jesus put his arms around you and reassure you that he is still the great I am. Would you stand with me? And in standing acknowledge that God is. And we're standing here today still before him We're standing here today with faith in our hearts. We're standing here today with the word of God before us. We're standing here today with the assurance that God is the I am. He said, that's what I want you to know today. Be still and know that I am. I just want us to let that sink in for just a moment. We'll close this part of the service with that thought in our minds, God is. The I am always will be the I am. And he loves every one of us. And we're standing in his presence today, feeling the love of God. I feel love here today. I feel hope here today. I feel faith here today. I feel someone reaching out for help today. I'm telling you, the helper is here today. The I am is here today. They haven't dispensed of God from the universe. They haven't run him out. No, no, no. He's right here. He said, just be still and know that I am God. Let's lift our hands to him right now. Acknowledge his presence. Acknowledge his grace. Acknowledge his love. And remember that he is the I am. Amen.